العلم يحلو كل ما كررته ولذاك عدت مكررا لحلاوتي Now, typically, this is what you get, is here, this is pressure wave, this is flow wave, this is volume wave. Uh, let me get you the standard one. Mm. So this is what you will see, maybe not in these colors, but you will see this in every new ventilator. Every new ventilator will have a little screen, and this is time. Time goes across, and pressure. you'll see a pressure, flow, and volume. We call them waveforms, scalars, they have different names. Now, what is this pressure? Oops, sorry. What is this pressure? Peep. Peep. Okay. What is this pressure? PIP. PIP. How long is it from here till here? This is the inspiratory time. Okay. Flow. This is flow inside. All this air flowing inside the lungs. When air goes inside the lungs initially, it goes in fast because the lung is empty. So you can see that the flow is accelerating. Okay? Then the flow starts slowing down. It didn't work. Let's uh, try. Then the flow starts slowing down as the lung fills. wave accelerating, decelerating. Yeah, in Kulida, air going in. Flow means air going inside and uh, going into one direction. Goes in fast initially and as the lungs start filling, the flow slows down a bit. Obadin D quality inspiration. D expiration. Air coming out from the lungs. Asthmatics bit uh as an indication for the lung disease. F F F A V one. What's F A V one? First second. So most of the air would come out in the first part of the exhalation. So that's why you see very high flow, henna, and as most of the air empties the lung, the flow slows down again. So it goes in fast as the lung fills up. The air slows, but it's still going in. And when the lung, when the expiration starts, air comes out very fast and then slows as the lung empties. Okay? And the volume, the volume increases as the air going in all the time. Initially increases very fast and increases a little slower. Then it decreases very fast as the air goes out of the lung. And then it decreases a little slower until it goes back to baseline. So you have pressure for, this is the inspiratory time from here to here from here to here, and from here to here, to this point. After that, you start the expiration. Because air goes out, it goes down to baseline, so you start the next breath. So how do we normally breathe? Do we normally breathe while we're sitting here? By pressure, by flow, or by volume? You guys are sitting here now. How do you breathe? Pressure, flow, or volume? Anybody breathe by volume? Anybody? Nobody breathe by volume? Yeah, about pressure? Anybody breathe by pressure? Okay. So you breathe by pressure, you don't breathe by volume. No? Anybody else breathe by pressure? Only one person breathe by pressure? How about flow? Anybody breathing by flow? Hmm? <laughs> 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 okay. So, all of us, while we're sitting here, 
and babies in the NICU, we breathe pressure because if the pressure outside is higher than the pressure inside, then air goes in. When they're equal, then air doesn't move. When the pressure inside increases more than the pressure outside, then the air comes out. Mm -hmm. So there are pressure changes in every breathing cycle. When we breathe in, air inside the lungs pressure is lower than atmospheric. And when we exhale, pressure inside is higher than atmospheric. Okay, so we all breathe by pressure. We also breathe by volume. Okay, when I take a breath, my volume in the lung increase. When I exhale, the volume of the lung decrease. And as the air goes in, that's flow in. As the air comes out, that's flow out. So we all breathe by pressure, volume, and flow. Okay, and babies in the unit, they breathe pressure, volume, and flow. And the relationship between these, the way we see it, decides how is the breath being conducted and how long is the breath is taking, how fast the air is going in. But they're all very important parts and it happens in every breath, every breath we take. We mentioned, um, <coughs> now babies breathe a little bit different from us because they breathe by positive pressure while we breathe by negative pressure. Uh, many, many years ago they did this iron lung machine that they put someone inside the machine and then they make a seal here, then they create vacuum. So for the lung to expand for people who have paralysis. So the idea is nice because you're actually not pushing air, you're creating the negative pressure. But obviously to have someone sealed in some vacuum tube, you cannot do anything else. So it didn't work very well. Uh, we also mentioned normally we have the pleural pressure. What is it? Is it positive, negative, or zero? Our pleural pressure currently as we sit. Negative pressure. Why is it negative? Okay. The thoracic cavity is sealed. Okay. Our ribs are curved. So the curved ribs, they want to straighten. Okay, so they have compliance, the chest wall compliance, they want to go out. And lung tissue is elastic, it wants to collapse. So our lungs inside wants to collapse, our chest wall wants to expand. So what happens in between in the pleural space comes negative pressure. Okay, and the negative pressure resting, like if I'm standing here not breathing, okay, no, no air is going in, no air is going out. After I finished exhaling, this is actually the point, the pressure, the, neg the point of the pressure, of the negative pleural pressure that I have at rest is called functional residual capacity, where the tendency of the chest wall to straighten and the tendency of the lung wall collapse equalize. So this is another definition of FRC. Uh, remember the earlier definition is the amount of air left in your lung after a normal expiration. So this is from a lung volume expiration definition. Another definition is physiologic from that the volume of the lung at the point where there's no air flow but there's equilibrium between chest wall compliance, tendency to go out and, and lung compliance. Now this reflects on babies a lot because babies don't have the same solid chest wall that we have. So the reaction or the reflection between all this is important. We just mentioned Dr. Hakim said flow. So how much do you set the flow? As we mentioned, new vents don't have flow. They have something else. It's called rise time. Okay. If you see here, when you say PIP 20 and I time 0.4, so do you actually get 20 centimeter of water for 0.4 seconds, or you get something else? Looking at this graph, what do you think? Yes. You get less. Because it takes time from when air starts going into the lung until you hit the 20 PIP. This is called rise time to reach where you want. Now what does this rise time depend on? The flow. Most importantly it depends on the flow. If you have fast flow what will happen? High flow. It will go up quick, right? If you have slow flow. So we can look at it here. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to see it. Unfortunately we could not connect it. The idea of all this, the wet time we wasted, is that you could actually see this in, on the screen. 
all these three things. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but this is, can you see this? And I cannot stop it either. This is pressure. To come closer. Yeah, to come, come closer, closer. So it will be a little easier. You don't even have a screen. But. Okay. 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 Good, like this is okay. You can, guys can see. Okay, we can stop. And the cushion left on the screen. Okay. Okay, so we have, yeah, we have this is airway pressure. So it goes up, it comes down. It goes up, it comes down. If I decrease the flow, what do you think will happen? Okay, so it will be a little flat. You see? You see now it's taking more time to get there. Okay, if I really decrease it lower, what will happen? It will never get you your PIP. So, they, in adults, they do four to five minute insulation for flow. In children, we use a little bit more, five to six liters generally. If you use high frequency, it may need more flow because there is the way actually vents work. This is a um, high frequency tubing that Hakim can use it because it's stiff, so you don't lose the wiggle. But basically, the ventilator is air uh, comes in, goes to the baby, then comes out. If I want the baby to get PIP, I squeeze here. I put a valve and it squeezes here. So the air goes inside. If I want the baby to exhale, I let it open. So the air would come out. This is all the ventilators work this way. And it's just the fancy stuff of which kind of valve you have and how fast it responds and how and most ventilators now have a sensor here. This one it measures air going in and air coming in. It's a little tiny wire. It gets heated to 400 degrees. So when gases passes by, it changes its resistance. And it knows because it knows how much air, how much the space here. So it understands how much air goes in, how much air comes out from, and how fast is this air going in and out by changing in the resistance. So most ventilators have this kind of full hot wire and a monitor. So it's not important, but the important thing is to know that it measures volumes and flow right at the EG tube, which is good. Okay? We don't want something that measures things far because then all the circuit is in between your measurements. So first thing is now the new ventilators don't have flow. They have rate of rise. You want to decide how fast this rise. So how, do you, how fast do you want it to rise? Let us look at the flow one. Okay. What do you see here? Maybe we can. Okay. Can you see flow? It's not very good. Okay. But you can see air goes up, and it, as its lung fills, it slows down a little bit. We increase it. Okay. So I'll make it a little easier to see. Air goes up, then as the lung fills up, it slows down. Then nothing is happening. Right? No air goes out, no air comes in. This is in that empty space. Then the air comes out very fast. This is what we call inspiratory pause or inspiratory hold. Okay, normally how do we breathe? Do we breathe like? Or do we breathe? Or breathe the second one. Okay, as soon as we finish getting air in, the air comes out. Because we have normal lungs. Okay. Now, if I have very non-compliant lung, stiff lungs, I have RDS, surfactant deficiency, what will happen? Okay. As remember the time constant is compliance times resistance. If my compliance is so poor, so low, then my eye time will be very short. My lung will fill up very quickly because it only goes from here to here. There's no space. It does not inflate very well. So it goes from here to here. So where the lung will be filled. If I let all the air out, it will come out. And I didn't really get the chance to have gas exchange in my lungs because it was so short. So if you have a baby with RDS, we sometimes want, we want to see a little pause. 
whereby you have time for gas exchange. The lung is inflated and oxygen can uh, have a chance to diffuse between the alveoli and the blood vessels. Now, how many ways I can affect this pause? I can affect it two ways. One is the flow. Okay? So if I decrease the flow, it will become very short because it's taking long time for the air to come in. If I increase the flow, it will come, become very big because the air goes in, fills up the lung, and then fills it up quickly and then has nothing to do for, for the rest of your eye time. The second thing I can do is I can increase my eye time. Okay? So if I go here, you see what this looks like? Okay? See the pause? Okay, now if I increase my eye time, what do you think will happen to this pause, to this area where no air goes anywhere? Will it go increase or decrease? Hmm? Uh, someone from this side? Okay. It's not easy to imagine. It's, I can understand it's difficult, and that's why I usually like to put it on the screen, because it's much easier to see it then. Okay, let us do it on the on my presentation, from my presentation part. Okay. We can do a lot of things with uh, this, but the idea is we have three waveforms, pressure, flow, volume, and then we have loops. Okay. So this is the basic one. This is PEEP, P-I-P -P for I time, then PEEP again. This is pressure versus time. Okay. Volume is different from pressure. All newborns are ventilated with pressure limited ventilation. Okay, we used to in the very beginning in the early 70s when they started ventilating babies, they started doing volume ventilation. So now what is the difference between volume ventilation and pressure ventilation? You can see it here. Uh, volume ventilation, the, you uh, adults, I don't know if anybody works in adult unit or big kids ventilate big children. No? Okay. We normally breathe volume. We normally, we, we breathe volume pressure and flow as we've mentioned. But the idea is we have a tidal volume 500 ml. Volume goes in, then once we reach that volume 500 ml, it comes out. There is no stopping. So the volume curve Volume ventilation will look something like this. Volume in, finish the 500 ml, it comes out. Now, if I want to say, I want this baby to have, uh, the baby is 2 kilos, so I want him to have 5 ml per kilo, that's 10 ml. The baby has very poor lung. The lung can only take 6 ml. Now, I put 10 ml, what will happen? Rupture, right? So, all kids, when they scale down an adult ventilator to baby ventilator, they got pneumothorax and died. So they said, okay, we don't want them to die, so what do we do? We will just put enough to move their chest, give them pressure, okay? And we don't know how much volume they'll get, but they'll get this pressure, move their chest, maybe they don't die. So then started the pressure-limited ventilation. Now the new modes, like volume guarantee, they, they kind of combine pressure with volume. The idea is we don't want to give a lot of volume because volume is dangerous and we, the babies change also. Like a baby now has RDS for compliance, you give him surfactant, or he gets started getting better by himself, starts making his own surfactant, his compliance improve. So if I put him on a vent and go sleep, then things can change <coughs> or come back tomorrow. So then he'd be having different volumes, different lung mechanics. So it's important to do something that Either I stay at the bedside and keep changing things as I see things changing, or do something that will wean the baby by himself, like something like volume guarantee. Lots of ventilators now are coming with these hybrid modes, pressure with volume. Okay, now the pressure ventilation has, you reach certain pressure, you stay on this pressure for the high time, and then you go into expiration. Um, okay. Initially, there's something called PIP and P plateau. When the air goes into the lung, <coughs> the um, airways are tight, 
and then they snap open so the actually the, the PIP will drop a little bit and get you to this P plateau. So you will see it frequently, little spike on your PIP. If you have a, a screen, you may see a little tiny spike and then flat. So this is just the, how the airway resistance comes. Now, what is the difference between this one and this one? Anything? Okay, this is kind of narrow. The, the blue is narrower. So it, it reaches the same peak, but the flow is narrower. So if I decrease my eye time, this is what I will see. The flow, the, the blue parts become narrower because now I have shorter eye time. Okay, how about this one? How, what do you see about the blue? It becomes wider. Okay, so this is longer eye time. Okay, now if you look at the red here, what do you see in the red? This is flow in. So as the flow in goes in, the lung fills up. And then all of a sudden, this is a little too short. So all of a sudden, the breath was stopped. The valve opened and let all the air out. Remember we said, air goes into the baby. One tube goes to the baby and one tube comes out of the baby. I block the tube that comes out, then air goes to the baby. I open it, then air comes out from the baby. So, all of a sudden, I opened it, so the baby starts going into expiration right away, okay? Then, it stays, all this is expiratory time. While here, I have a very long eye time. So, air goes in, and then it filled up the lung, but then I didn't open the valve. The valve is still closed, so the air cannot come out from the baby. So, then we have all this period of time from here to here where there is no more fresh air going inside but the lung is kept inflated. Then finally I let the air come out. So now the air comes out from the baby. Okay, so this is a very long eye time. What we want to see is a um, something in between that you have a short inspiratory pause. This assures us that the baby is getting full. All air that the baby needs gets in, and they have a small pause to keep the lung well inflated. So if I'm looking at the graphs and I'm trying to decide what my eye time is, should be, because everybody gets an eye time 0.45, right? So if you have compliant lungs, 0.45 may be okay. It's probably on the longer side, but it's okay. But if you have a non-compliant lung, then you need much less or else you'll have a very long, you'll have something like this. Very long pause, respiratory pause, where no fresh air comes in. So I'll adjust my eye time according to this flow. If the flow finishes, then I just want a small pause, a small piece here, like only this much. I don't want this much. So this way I can control my eye time. This is how I set my eye time on the babies. We talked about rise time, and uh, okay, this is a little different concept, and um, it's going to be important because all new vents have that now. There is a mode here called pressure support ventilation, which Dr. Uh, Ali talked about, uh, that you, the baby controls inspiratory time and ends the, let the air breath end when he wants. How would the vent know that the baby had enough, that the baby doesn't want anymore, that the baby wants to choose the breath? Do we breathe the same length every breath? Or we sometimes take a big breath like, uh, and sometimes we take, so sometimes we take short breath, sometimes we take long, right? So how would the ventilator know that the baby wants a breath, long breath this time and a short breath that time? So what they do is they say, okay, if the baby wants a big breath, like me, it will allow a lot more flow to go in. And as the flow slows down, then the lung will be filling up. So they said, okay, this is the flow. This is flow in, flow out. So they said, okay, the fastest point, the peak, which we saw here of the flow, 
this point, the, the top of the mountain of the flow here, this will be 100% flow. This is the fastest flow. Every breath is different because if I take a short breath, this point may be down here. If I take a very long breath, maybe up here, but this one is here. So they say, they we'll take this as 100%. So where is 50% of flow rate? Somewhere in the middle, right? So half the, half the distance from here to here. So this is peak flow, 100% or make it peak flow. It's a little easier. So it looks like a peak. So this is peak flow, we'll call it 100%. Half the way there is 50%. Quarter of the way there is 25%. So they say, okay, when the baby gets to about 25% going down, we'll say, okay, the baby had enough. Because most of the air that he wants is already in. So we'll terminate the breath. So this is how this vent does it. It cannot really tell that the baby wants to stop now, but it can tell that the peak flow, considered 100%, 50% is here, then 25% is here, so they say, okay, we'll terminate it at 20%, we'll stop. So this is how machines can terminate a breath. How can they start a breath? How does the machine know that the baby wants to take a breath? Exactly, so it can either do pressure of or flow, and what they'll do is if they feel that the baby here, like here, this is a baby who's not taking any breath. Here, the baby pulls air in. So it feels that the baby's taking a breath, wants a breath. Then it will go ahead and give him a breath. So this sensor will tell the machine, okay, the baby's pulling some air in, so it's time to give him a breath. Or the baby's already lung is getting almost full, so it's time to terminate the breath. So this is how the vent synchronizes with the baby. This is why we call it synchronized ventilation. The vent can tell when the baby wants, but as you can see, the, the vent is always little behind. Like the baby pulls air in, then the vent will say, okay, yes, the baby wants air now. Okay, so there may be a little lag. Okay, and they're trying to do it different ways or uh, have better sensor response, but generally it's reasonable. Okay, also as the breath terminates, it measures 100%, then it's, it sees what it, where else the baby is. Okay. Um, okay. This is, it's a uh, important flow wave that, this is inhalation as we mentioned, and this is deceleration. If the next breath starts before all the air comes out, then there is some residual air in the lung and then the next breath builds up on that. So over time you'll build up on some more air, some more air, then you'll end up with a lot more air and air trapping. So it's very important to make sure your IE ratio and on the ventilator, all ventilators will give you IE ratio that w w w do we spend more time in inspiration or more time in expiration? Expiration. We usually spend most of our time in expiration. So expiration should be more. So if we get IE ratio 1 to 1, then we're becoming dangerous. Um, how can this happen in this vent or in the vent in your place? If you put the baby in assist control, it, or PSV, it means the ventilator will respond to every baby's breath. It will help the baby. Okay. With assist control in particular, it will give him a fixed eye time. So what happens if the baby becomes tachypnic? Then your eye time is fixed. So for example, for simplicity, let's say we give him eye time of 0.5 okay, and rate of 60. So how much time is he spending in inspiration and how much is an expiration? Okay, so 60 breath per minute times 0.5 seconds inspiration, that's 30. So 30 seconds in inspiration, and how much is in expiration? So 30 seconds, the remaining 30 seconds. So this is IE of 1 to 1. Now the baby becomes, someone sticks him because they need to take blood, the baby becomes tachypnic. So now he's breathing 90. So now what's your IE ratio? 
your right time is still 0.5 so 90 times 0.5 is 45 seconds so how much is expiration 15 because we have 60 <laughs> seconds in the whole minutes you're spending you're taking 90 breaths per minute at 0.5 seconds each that's 45 seconds you only have 15 seconds for expiration so now you have an inspiratory time high inspiratory to expiratory ratio of 3 to 1 so we said actually expiration should be higher should be 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 so reverse IA ratio will cause air trapping because the air will not have a chance to come out of the baby's lungs so IA ratios are very important part 2 um, okay we mentioned this Okay. Uh, this is just more. Th some ventilator call it flow termination. Some f termin some they call it termination sensitivity. I don't know anybody. Who, what kind of ventilators you have? Mm -hmm. I saw here Infant Star and Draeger. Okay. Anybody has any other vents? Hmm. Different, okay. Yes. Is the most common you know, we use. Okay, what modes do you usually use? SIMV. SIMV, okay. Do you use any other modes other than SIMV? SLE. SLE, you use which modes? PTV. Hmm? PTV, SLE, Okay, PTV. So, what is PTV? Patient trigger. Patient trigger ventilation, okay. That it's different ventilators call the same mode different things because PTV and SLE is assist control in the trigger so it's important to know exactly how your vent is it doesn't matter what somebody else vent somebody else's vent is doing it's very important what your vent is is doing so assist control means that every breath is supported for your specific item okay do you have SLE uh, what? Which one? The, you, the, the, not the 5000 with the screen. No, okay. Without, Ni screen. without screen. Anybody has a vent with a screen? Drig, you have the screen for Drigger? No, that's the top screen that comes on top. Okay. Because I've seen vents from Brazil that has nice big screen. Anybody has that? No, Brazil vent. Okay, and they have big screens in them that you can see graphs. Okay, well, anyway, I think a, um, uh, unfortunately we cannot really show you graphs running on the vent because it will be much easier. But at least if we understand the pressure waveform, the flow waveform, what does that mean? Because even you can see it in your own... It, it will make it um, Im more imaginable when you adjust like flow rates for example or eye time what does that mean because if you see it on your with your eyes it actually it makes it much easier to decide your if what we're doing is acceptable or what is it that you want to achieve or not um, okay any specific questions about uh, anything we've done so far? Unfortunately, we cannot show you the things. I can explain things on presentation, but it doesn't work very well. And we made sure that we got this from Dubai by DHL. So make sure that we can work with it today, but unfortunately it didn't work. Um, okay. This <coughs> Um, okay, let's just do rice time because this is what you will see in the new ventilators that we sh briefly showed you here that this is fast rise and this you'll end up with very short flow and a very big pause. If you make the flow very high on this vent as it is now the pressure, this is pressure wave and this is flow. This is flow in, this is flow out. 
So if you make it fast flow, the pressure will go up quickly and you'll have this little snap that this is peak and this is peak plateau and then you'll have very wide pause because of the fast rise that the lung fills up quickly. If you make it slow flow, it will take long time to get to your PIP and you may not achieve it if it's very slow. So, and then you'll have short pause or no pause at all. So usually we like the moderate stuff, the one you don't get snaps, you don't get very big difference between your PIP and your P plateau, and you get small inspiratory pause or small inspiratory hold. In the PSV mode, there's no inspiratory hold because, as we've mentioned, it terminates the breath once you reach 15% or 20%. So it will be something like this. This is flow in, flow out. Before the flow reaches to zero, the valve will open and will allow the air to come out. So there's no inspiratory pause, which is normal for most people who are breathing normally. So PSV is good for a baby who is close to extubation, who has good lungs, good compliance, doing okay. Assist control, SIMV, is, are better modes for sick kids. SIMV is probably the safest mode if you don't want to worry. It's not the best mode, but it's probably the safest mode if you don't want to worry about auto-triggering because if water collects in the tubing, the water can move. Anybody has a problem with humidity and water collecting in your vent tubes? Yes? No? Hmm? So sometimes water would collect and it would move up and down and that would, if the trigger, since if it's sensitive ventilator, as it moves out, the ventilator will think the baby's taking a breath. So it will give the baby a breath. So it can cause lots of breath to stack on top of each other. Okay. Um, okay, we'll just mention some flow loops for a little, uh, um, the, the flow loops are e either pressure volume or flow volume and it expresses the relationship between the pressure and the volume as we've mentioned so this is inspiration it goes up the volume goes up as the pressure goes up and then this the expiration comes down in a different direction now this is a spontaneous breath. Um, okay, let us go to, yes, this is good. Now, if the dynamic compliance is expressed by drawing a line from this point where they meet here to this point where they meet here. The slope of this line is important. Now, which, which graph is better, this graph for this graph, which means not better in terms of uh, which is better compliance, which shows us a good compliance. The solid one or the dotted one? Hmm? The dotted one because this is pressure, it reaches the same volume at a lower pressure. So this means change in volume over change in pressure is compliance. So improved compliance, you get more volume for less pressure or more volume for the same pressure. So if I see this and it's changing into this, then this tells me that the baby's compliance is, is deteriorating and I need to do something about it. So this, this line here, the curve slope, the slope becoming towards the horizontal indicates that the compliance is worsening. The second part is this which uh, Dr. Ibrahim showed us. It's called the peak. It's like the bird peak. So when, when I see this from, the, this is pressure, this is volume. 
So from here to here, I have an increase in pressure from, say, 30 to 40. How much volume did I get? Nothing. So it means that I can easily bring my PIP down to here and lose nothing because I'm not getting any volume for this. So this is showing me that I'm just getting uh, barotrauma for no volume or uh, I'm, get, I'm causing over this section, I'm causing damage. I can easily bring my PIP down. Uh, okay. Now, flow volume, you need to know which direction it's going because sometimes it goes this direction, sometimes it goes the other direction. Like here, this is expiration initially fast, then inspiration is more rounded than the expiration. Usually the expiration, if you have a resistance to to expiration, you have secretions or you have bronchospasm, this will not be as steep. This will actually change and become, this is the obstructive pattern. Um, with the bronchodilator, this is usually after the, um, for asthmatics we use one before and after. So this is FAV1, that this is flow fast initially, then it slows down and it reaches zero before the inspiration. When it's uh, not as steep as this, it means there's more resistance and it takes longer time for all the air to come out. So sometimes the flow volume is, is the other way around. It will show you expiration on top and inspiration at the bottom. So you just need to make sure which one you're looking at. But generally it would look like the, the expiration looks different from inspiration because the expiration will have a big peak and then it slows down. We need this equals cases. No, this equals obstruction. When I'm sorry, say that again. In units, this, this no. This, um, if you see this uh, sloping more, this equals obstruction, usually secretion. Secretion, you also see it during inspiration as jagged because the secretion will make bubbling or not a smooth line. So the top one will not be straight. The top one will be a little erratic and the lower one will be more sloping because this is increased resistance during expiration. Uh, okay, usually after we explain lots about flow and volume and loops, then we uh, the most important thing is to actually take care of the patients because we can look at vents, look at graphs, but it's the finally the patients who, if he's getting better, he decides that what we've done was good or what we have not, or what we've done was bad because it doesn't make it the, uh, my thinking on the vent can be something and unless that the patient responds to the way I am hoping to or according to the plan, then all what we're doing is not applying. So the most important thing is to make sure that what we do works well with our patients. Okay, sorry, thank you for attending. I'm sorry it uh, didn't work out the way we wanted. So.